the holidays are coming, so it's time for a Christmas special. Today, we're building a USB Christmas tree. With just four transistors and a handful of passive components, you can fill your workshop with a little festive glow that will get you all in the Christmas mood. To make sure everyone can build this, I will start with a step-by-step -step assembly guide. Once we've built it, I will break down the circuit behind the fading lights so you understand exactly how it works. In the description, you will find a link to download all files and information you will need. Now before we start, a short word about the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. Is this the final result of your project? Are you spending hours debugging to just find another loose wire? Don't settle for this. Level up with JLC PCB. High precision, professional printed circuit boards. The ordering process is very easy. Click here to select your Gerber file. It will upload to the website. And here you see the PCB. You can check more details in the Gerber viewer. Here you can select the PCB quantity and the PCB specifications, like the core. JLC PCB is fast. Two days production is standard. If you're in a hurry, you can go for 24 hours. And now look at this price. This really puts a smile on my Dutch face. Finally, select your shipping method. Click save to cart and your PCB order is ready to go. Level up with JLC PCB. Here you see the assembly instruction. We will start with the lowest components, the resistors. Follow the material list and insert all resistors. Clean your solder iron tip with a wet sponge or tissue. Then put the solder iron tip on the PCB against the wire and add some tin. For the resistor values, you can check the color codes on resistorcolorcodecalc.com. For instance, this resistor has five bands and the colors are yellow, violet, black, red, brown. You select here five band, fill in the colors, and this is the result, 47 kilo ohm. Then we place the four transistors. Only the top transistor is a 2N3906 PNP transistor. The other three are 2N3904 NPN transistors. The 3906 and 3904 are very common and I recommend just to buy this type. You can use alternative transistors, but make sure you check the emitter base collector pinning because they can be different. Next, we will place the L caps. Please note the polarity. This stripe is the minus. The plus is indicated here on the PCB. Finally, we solder all the LEDs. The plus is the longer leg, which goes into the round pad. The minus is the shorter leg, which goes into the square pad. If you already cut the LEDs, you can check the inside. The bigger metal tab is the minus. The LED chip is actually mounted on top of it. D128 are red LEDs. D9 to D16 are green LEDs. A standard USB-A requires a thickness of 2 mm. Our PCB is a standard 1.6 mm thick, so we need to add about half a millimeter to the underside of the connector to ensure a good contact. To do this, cut a piece of rigid plastic material, for instance from a dish soap bottle, a credit card or some plastic packaging. First, cut a long strip and hold it here to see if it fits well into the USB. If it is ok and doesn't feel wobbly, cut it and permanently glue it to the PCB with superglue or epoxy. Your Christmas tree is ready to use. If you prefer to have a 90 degree mounting, please follow the next step. Snap off the PCB connector with pliers. 
solder a 90 degree header to the snapped off connector. Mount the connector with the header on the main PCB. Pay attention, plus and minus are aligned. And of course, add some plastic material to adjust the thickness. Now you can mount your Christmas tree under 90 degrees. Let me now show you how this circuit works. This is the schematic of the circuit. It may look a bit overwhelming if you're new to electronics, so let me split it in four function blocks. On the left, we have the engine of the circuit, a classic circuit called the A-stable multivibrator. This circuit will switch from one state to the other, creating a square waveform at the collectors of Q1 and Q2. The frequency of the square wave depends on R18, R19, C2 and C3. The next block is the wave shaper. We feed the square waveform via R21 into C4. So it will slowly charge and discharge. The output is this shark fin shape voltage, which results in a nice fading effect for the LEDs. Now this wave shaper is very weak and can only provide about 3 milliamps. To feed so many LEDs, we need about 100 milliamps, so we need a current amplifier. Q3 and Q4 are connected as emitter followers. They follow the voltage, but can amplify the current by about 100 to 300 times. Finally, the LEDs. Each LED has an individual resistor to limit the current. If you're interested, you can also have a look at the LT SPI simulation. Here you see the circuit in the LT SPI simulator. I used LT SPIs to fine tune the component values before I ordered the components. I have set a transient analysis to start at 5 seconds and stop at 20 seconds. Let's start the simulation. Here is the square wave at Q2. It's a little distorted because the wave shaper is drawing some current. Here you see the voltage at the output of the wave shaper. You see it has a shark fin shape. And here you have the current through an LED. Here it's off. It slowly rises until it reaches about 10 milliamps and then it's off again. LT Spice is free. Just search LT Spice and download it from analog.com. I hope you liked the video and learned something from it. If it was useful for you, please like and subscribe and leave your experiences in the comments.